Well, hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and I'd like to welcome you to this video where I have something for you that you have been asking for for quite some time. A tool database library with all the CNC router bits that are available on the IDC Woodcraft store. Thanks to our brother, Bill, who has been watching this channel for some time, he took it upon himself to take the feeds and speeds table that I put together and put it into a database and then sent me the database. I got to looking at it and going, wow, this guy did a really good job. And all I had to do was add a few more tools, tweak it out a bit and take into account some other things. And now it is done and available to you. So this video is going to walk you through how to install that database onto your computer. The benefit, you don't have to manually enter the information anymore. It all comes in in one shot. So if you want that file, it's available to you for free down below in the dis uh, description field or in the first comment. When you click that link, it's going to download that tool database file. Now, you need to be on the computer that has your Vectrix software on it in order to do this. If you're on a touchpad or iPhone or whatever it is and you do it, it's just going to do download to the device that you're on. So you need to do it from the computer that has your design software on it. This video is going to walk you through how to get it installed and all the things that I've added into this tool database library plus the perks that are in there as well. So I'm really excited. I've been able to give you a resource that will really help you out in your CNC journey. So with that, we're going to dive into my computer and we're going to talk about uh, a couple of front end things and then we're going to dive into how to get this thing installed into your Vectric software so you don't have to manually do this stuff anymore. Let's go. We are on my computer now. And before we start up with this instruction to import the database for the Vectric tool library for the IDC Woodcraft tools, there's a couple things I want to share with you. The first one is that this method that I'm showing you will work for all the CNC router design variants of Vectric. What I mean by that is that if you have cut 2D, regardless of whether it's Pro or Desktop, or if you have the V-Carb series, regardless of whether it's Pro or Desktop, or if you have the Aspire version, this will work on all of those. I know that this tool database works on version 10 and 11 when you import it. If you have an earlier version, I don't know. I don't have that, but I don't see why not it would import into your software. The other thing I want to tell you is that this is for the Vectric software. It is not for any other software to the best of my knowledge. I don't use anything else, nor will I create this database for any other software. If you want that, you can download the feeds and speeds table or review that that has come with this file and input your information into your software manually. So I am going to go into the Vectric Pro software. We get it launched and the first thing comes up is a blank screen and you have the menu over here on the left. Up top we have create a new file, new file from a template, and open an existing file. It doesn't really matter which one we open up because we're not going to be messing with the design at all. We're going to be just working with the tool database. And that is something of an independent feature that Vector looks at when it's or when you are selecting your bits for your project. But for all intents and purposes, we're simply just going to create a new file. Click that. And you'll get this menu on the left where you set up your project information, the size of the project, whether you're working in inches or millimeters, none of this matters because we're not doing any design work. So we're going to click OK. And then we're going to go up to the top on the left where you see this blue arrow button and we're going to click it to get over to the toolpath commands. Select that and the menu on the right opens up. On that menu you're going to see an icon that looks like this. When you hover over it, it's going to say Display Tool Database. 
it has an image of three tools on it. Select that image and your tool database library will open up. Now we see a whole bunch of things when we open up the library. We've got a bunch of things going on up the top up here, over here. We have a bunch of bits already populated in the library. Buttons down at the lower left corner and buttons to the lower right corner. I am not going to explain all these features because I've already done it in another video that tells you how to populate your tool library and it tells you what all these features are for. So if you want to know that detail down in the description is the link to that video. This one just shows you how to install the database. One of the things I want you to do first is up top it says material. And you'll see something up here, whether it says softwood or hardwood. When you click this little window here, it's going to drop down and you'll see several selections. Mine has hardwood, MDF, and softwood. You might have acrylic in yours, maybe some other features like aluminum. We're going to go to hardwood. The bits that I have set up, the feeds and speeds, are for medium type grain wood such as walnut oak harder woods actually so that's what we want to work with with this database so make sure that this says hardwood the next thing i want you to do is to collapse the trees that you have opened up so what you want to do is simply find anything that has a minus on it just like this metric tools click it and it'll all collapse if I click the plus, you'll see the Imperial tools will expand and there's all the bits in that library. We want to collapse that back down. So everything should be collapsed like this. You should just see pluses over here and no bits should be showing up. Just the master header for each bit selection, selection or series. Now we're going to go down to the bottom of the screen. And there's going to be a series of buttons down here. The one we want is the one in the middle that when you hover over it, it says import a tool database. Select that button. And you're going to open up a folder. And you want to go to wherever the, full, the file is after you've downloaded it or wherever you've moved it to. I've got it in the downloads folder and it looks like this. It's going to be titled IDC Woodcraft Tool Database for Vectric. It's a VTDB file. Select that file and click open. And then this menu is going to pop up or this warning box that says how would you like to import the tools. So I am not going to go through the meaning of each one of these things. I'm just going to tell you to use the Merge No Overwriting button. What that will do is that will bring that database in independently of all the other bits that you have in here. And you'll see what happens in just a moment. You notice right here we only have three tree tops, if you will. So I am going to select Merge No Overwriting. And our database has now loaded. There's two things I want to point out right away. First of all, it says here, IDC Performance CNC Bits. We're going to collapse this tree that just popped in here by clicking the minus sign right here. And you see, instead of three that I had before, now I have a fourth. The merge with no overriding button adds the tree of the bits instead of overwriting them. So we haven't touched the three that I already had in. We simply just added it. The second thing is, is we need to tell Vectric that we have added it and we're going to accept it. So down in the lower le uh, right of the tool database box are three buttons, the apply, OK, and cancel. If you select cancel, then what you're going to do is eliminate everything you just did. You need to click the OK button to tell Vectric I am accepting the changes I've made. So we're going to do that and then go back into 
the database by clicking the display tool database and it pops back up and these are in here the second thing I want to show you is I'm going to collapse this tree back down and now we're going to click OK again and then we go back into the database and you notice that it brought in the database with everything collapsed Vectric will remember the way you had it set last and bring it back in that way so we're simply going to expand that IDC performance CNC bits click OK and open it back up and then you can see that is all expanded so the second thing that I want to point out is you can see that some of the fields actually run off the end of this white area here where the text is now I'll probably fix this so that it is it you can see everything as it's defaulted in but the way to read anything that is run off is simply by taking your cursor and coming off to the edge of the tool database box until your cursor turns into a side-by-side -side arrow hold your left mouse button down and drag it out and that'll expand that window to whatever you want to expand it to one of the things that vector does not do is remember that you have expanded it to that I've got it expanded. I'm going to click OK and then open up the database again. You can see it's gone back down to its normal width. So maybe something they can fix. The other thing I want to show you before we go any further is how we can reposition all of our bits. The video that I did on the tool database will show you what I'm going to be doing here but I just want to show you anyway. I'm going to collapse the IDC performance bits tree back down again and then I'm going to hover over it, hold my left mouse button down and you can see now I have grabbed it and I can move it around. I'm going to put it up over Imperial Tools and what it did, it just repositioned it underneath the Imperial Tools. I want IDC performance CNC bits to be on top so I'm going to click the Imperial Tools and just drag it down below that and it will reposition itself. So now we have IDC performance bits on the top. So we're going to expand that tree and we're going to talk about everything that you just imported, which is everything that's in the IDC Woodcraft store. And then there are some bits in here that are not in the store that will be eventually. And before I go on, I want to give Bill, one of our CNC brothers, a ton of credit because on his own accord, he built this and sent it to me and then I just added all the information I did and just did some refinements and checked all the information there's nothing like people who do things like that it gets them on my radar and if you have been on this channel for a while you know that I am focused on growing the IDC business and I have some very, very big plans with it that's uh, coming over the uh, course of a couple of years. When we plan a business and we want to go big, we plan it out years ahead of time. And so Bill has put himself on my radar because of this voluntary work that he really laid it out quite nicely up front. Let's talk about everything you see here. First of all, I want to point out this notation field over in the right area. Every bit in here has information in this field here. When we have the title IDC performance bit selected, you're going to have this bit of information, which is basically a welcome comment. And then it's going to have a link to the IDC Woodcraft store. So if you want to go shopping for bits, you simply copy that link and then I'm going to go into my browser, Google, and in the address bar, right up in here, I'm going to paste that. And the IDC Woodcraft store pops up and then you can select whatever bits that you want. So let's go back. And I'm just going to show you, we're going to go into a router bit. We'll take the 1 8 down cutting end mill. And it has a link as well. So you simply copy that link. 
go into your browser, paste it into the address bar, hit enter, and up comes the 1 8 down cutting end mill. So this is the same way for every bit that's in here, for the ones that are in the store. Now every bit that has gold next to it, the little icon, if it's gold color, that means there's data in this area over here for that bit, where you select the bit and it'll import the cutting data for that bit with the geometry. You might see a couple that are grayed out like this. That means that there's no data. When I select the 20 degree V bit, you see there's no information here. It says create settings. That's because I don't have that bit in the IDC store yet. So uh, it is not on here, but it is a bit that eventually will get on the store. So if you ever need to buy one of these bits or replace them, then simply select the bit, copy the link that's up here, and you will be able to go to that specific bit to get yours. I also have the website listed in every one of these two. One other thing I want to show you about these notes section is that sometimes you have to scroll down. We are going to go down to the diamond drag bit and it's got information here. What we're used to when we are working in something like Microsoft Word or in our design work is the scroll wheel, the little wheel in the middle of your mouse. When you spin it, the text will scroll up and down. Let's go to a Word document and and when I use my scroll wheel, it goes up and down. We're used to that. However, the notation section for Vectric is not incorporating the scroll wheel feature. There may be notes in this field that are not being displayed. And the way you need to check is, first of all, you'll know that there are more notes in it if I have notated that by a little comment like this. See the notes below. What you have to do is actually cursor down with your arrow keys to see it. And there's your notes below. I may have video links that describe these bits or show you how they're used. Uh, for example, this diamond engraver, I show you how to work with this on glass and acrylic. And I actually engrave steel with it as well. So that is uh, one thing. And one thing I want to note about this, if you want to get this type of engraving on acrylic or glass or steel or granite, don't buy the bits you get on Amazon. They can't handle anything above acrylic. For diamond engraving, when you want to work with harder materials like glass and on up, you need to get a good quality one. That's why I endorse the Widget Works Diamond Engraver. I'll put a video down below uh, for that as well so you see what that bit does. But there's videos listed in this field too. So let's get back to this whole thing. I am going to collapse all these trees. Now, before I do that, you see that there are little pictures of three router bits. That means that this is a group. So we have a series of groups in here. I'm going to collapse each one. And you know it's a group when the text next to it is bold, like it is here on the O-flute bit. You notice underneath the bit identifier that tells what bit it is that you're going to select does is not bold. That means it's a bit. If it's bold, it's a group. So a group is O flute bits and then there's several O flute blit bits down below it or inside that tree. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve groups of bits in here. So this is broken out by the types of bits. We have, we have down cut bits, up cut bits, V bits, ball nose end mills, taper ball nose end mills, keyhole T slot cutters, O flute bits, bull bit, diamond drag bit, surfacing end mill, and drills. And as I add items to the IDC Woodcraft store, 
these fields would be populated accordingly. So before I take it any further, you're going to notice that each one of these groups has some information in parentheses over here. Now, this is important in some cases, but not in all. It really depends on the type of machine that you have. Most of the CNC benchtop routers, this doesn't mean anything. But for routers uh, that have a little bit more requirement, we'll need this information. This whole concept comes thanks to our CNC brother Roger who has a machine that it's gonna that, that this is important to. So I'm gonna show you what that means. We're gonna click into the 132nd down cutting end mill. And you can see over here we have in the notation section we've got the IDC Woodcraft website and then we have the link to get that bit that you copy which I just told you how to do. And then we have data populated down in the in the uh, field down here. We have the geometry of the bit itself. And then down here are all the run parameters of the bit. How fast it's supposed to cut, what the RPMs are supposed to be, the plunge rates, and what have you. Down at the bottom, there's a field that says tool number. And then in that box, there's a number one. Some CNC routers require the it has to know a tool number because it has tool or CNC router bit information in its own database the controller for the router itself and so we need to designate these bit identifiers because there's going to be information for each bit in the machine like in two different places because there's more advanced features that have to be taken into account sometimes such as cutter compensation and flute lengths and um, various other features that aren't relevant here so we have tool number one and now I'm going to select a different tool, but I want you to keep watching this little field here when I select the tool. So we're on the 132nd down cutting bit, and I'm going to click the 116th down cutter bit. And you see that switched to number two. And then I go to the eighth inch down cutter, it's number three, and so forth as I go down. Every CNC router bit in this database has its own tool number. This will save some CNCers a ton of time to designate tool numbers. So that's where or why the the T numbers are in parentheses here. If you have a long mill CNC router or a Bob CNC router or any of those machines that generally have like a trim router on it then this is completely irrelevant to you. You can just ignore the tool number thing. It won't mean a thing and it won't interfere with anything about how your CNC router will run. Okay, so let's run through what we have here. The first group says IDC diamond series bits, but you see there's no plus here. That's because there are no CNC router bits populated in there. That's because I don't have them yet. The IDC Diamond Series bits are bits that I have been working with a tooling company for a little while now to re-engineer CNC router bits uh, in a way to make them even better. Generally in the CNC router bit industry, there's pretty much a standard way that we have done things and nobody has really taken it and looked at it and said, how can I make these things stronger, uh, have less potential for something called chatter or deflection, and to last longer? And so I have been working with an engineering company that has been, um, we've been working together to actually kind of reinvent the wheel or make the wheel better we'll put it that way and so that's what is coming down the pike i'm very excited because these bits are going to cut better they're going to last longer that's what that's there for when that starts being populated as i add them i will populate them into the download database and they will be there we are now going to expand into this and you see in the down cutting end mills we have the down cut end mills and then we have the compression end mills 
I included them into this field, but I may make it its own field, its own group. So if it comes in like that, where you have one that says compression in mills, then that's why. And then we have the up cutters, V bits. You see that one is grayed out. That's because, like I said before, I don't have that one in stock. There will be some notations over here where if we select, let's find one, let's go with, um, there are some here that I've got data on. They are common bits, but I actually don't carry them in the store currently. If that's the case, then up in the notation field, it will say not carried in the IDC Woodcraft store yet or not currently available. There will be a note in there for that. Some bits, like the diamond drag bit, that is a third-party company that I endorse that bit. I believe that pretty much explains everything that we have done here, and you have now imported the IDC Performance CNC bits database, and you can now select from these bits. You don't have to manually input them here. Of course, if you have other design software, then you will have to manually import them. I will not make a database for every software that's out there. I am a vector guy, and that's the way it goes. So we're simply going to click OK. Well, before we click OK, we are going to expand all these trees out because I like to have the trees expanded of the bits that I work with. And then we're going to click the OK button in Vectric and let it rock out. And this is kind of interesting because it's the first time that I've actually seen how many bits are being carried in the IDC Woodcraft store. And of course we have the drill bit. So with that, we're going to click the OK button. And we are done. You now have your tool database completely installed with all the router bits. You don't have to add anything. If this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. And of course, comments down below of what you thought. Or if there's anything I missed, please add that down in the comments because I'm not perfect. I don't get everything. You might want to subscribe too because I teach all the stuff about the Vectric software, everything about CNC routers like our long mill CNC router here, which is a machine that I absolutely endorse, router bits, all that good stuff. So yeah, I hope you have a great day, better tomorrow, and we have just made your life a lot easier with your CNC router. I'll talk to you next time. Happy CNCing.